I chose to, uh, you know, sell a lot of our smaller stuff and, uh, you know, had that challenge of, okay, let's, let's find that large property. So that was a huge challenge in a very competitive market. Let's focus on some, so I'm curious on your wisdom on, on, on capital gains tax deferral and maybe the biggest frustration you or clients um, have faced when it comes to uh, selling highly appreciated assets and capital gains tax deferral options. So what's, what's the biggest frustration that you face with that um, um, for, for yourself? Well, uh, my uh, original thought back was in 2019, um, you know, managing at the time was probably about 45 properties uh, consisting of uh, over 200 apartments. And, uh, you know, I had that fantasy uh, over the years and, and looked at it much more seriously of, you know, how can I sell these smaller properties and exchange them into, you know, one large 150 apartment complex. So um, at, I chose to, uh, you know, sell a lot of our smaller stuff and, uh, you know, had that challenge of, okay, Let's let's find that large property. So that was a huge challenge in a very competitive market. So you know we we had very good luck um, selling of a lot a lot of our properties because the market was uh, so hot. Um, but then finding the large property was that big challenge in this environment. So you know I was left uh, you know looking in the Albany Saratoga market. Uh, looking in North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. So, um, you know, if anyone's not familiar with the 1031 exchange, you know, you have that 45 day identification period, which goes by very quickly. Um, so when we had sold large chunks of small properties within a certain time frame. You know, it, it, it was an added challenge, you know, in, in relations to just selling one and exchanging into another, you know, we're left uh, taking, in our case, six or seven or eight properties that we had sold, you know, within a couple of weeks from each other where we had to thread that needle, so to speak, and uh, work with those time constraints and, and uh, identify that next larger purchase. So that had been our largest challenge is dealing with that time constraint, uh, specifically in, in such a hot market. Yeah, we call that the shotgun wedding, right? Where you're going to get engaged in 45 days there, Bill. When you get married in 180, and it really becomes complicated when you've got multiple small properties. You're not just trading one property for another, but you're, you're literally trading all these small deals, trying to put it all to the qualified intermediary to, to gather up enough cash for the down payment for the one larger deal. Um, and we call it the blockbuster way of doing things. And you might not know this, Bill, but here at Capital Gains Tax Solutions, we have an amazing solution called the Deferred Sales Trust, which solves that. And what you can do now is sell each individual property move it into one trust and you can sell, sell these properties slowly. You know, we like to say, go find that ideal primary home family buyer who can get that FHA financing, right? Who can maximize and get a 30 year fixed loans and pay a price versus selling them in bulk to investors, which typically want lower, you know, a, a lower price, right? And then as you gather all this cash, now the next cool thing is you can wait on the sidelines. And you can purchase the real estate when you find the deal. And you might find the deal tomorrow, day 46, day 181, or maybe even five years from now. In fact, we just uh, did a deal. We sold a deal in Georgia. It's 126 unit. We saved a failed 1031 exchange. He paid off all of his debt, parked the funds in the trust, and he's still waiting. He's still waiting. I mean, he put some of it into some passive deals, which is pretty cool. Actually, that one in Tampa, he put some of it there on passive deal in Texas. But his thought was, I'm in California. I'm an expert um, for some areas of California, some areas of Georgia. But if I can't find a deal, if I can just wait on the sidelines and buy at a different time, all tax deferred, that changes everything. And so that's what the Deferred Sales Trust can do. By the way, you can learn more about that at CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com, CapitalGainsTaxSolutions.com. That being said, any thoughts on that, uh, Bill? Have you heard of that before? I have not heard of that before. Um, you know, I feel naive stating that, but I, I appreciate that insight because, boy, that 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 does 
or can really solve that time constraint issue. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. It, uh, it's transformational once you understand it. And that's part of my story. Actually in 2006, it was the high of the market. I'm at Marcus and Millichap helping clients buy and sell multifamily properties. And we learned about the 1031 exchange on day three. We also learned about like TICs and Delaware statutory trust, which is just another form of 1031. And so we were helping people, but then the market crashed. And we went from, you know, making a little bit of money to none for brokers. And then our clients, you know, fighting with the banks, holding on. And we kept identifying that the 1031 was a part of the challenge because people knew it was not a good time to buy in 05, 06, but they felt trapped by that huge 30 to 50% in capital gains tax. And so they used the 1031 exchange and then they weren't diversified, then they had too much debt, and then you know, the rest is kind of history. Well, with the Deferred Sales Trust, you don't have to do that ever again, and it's not a 1031, so it's, um, it's, it's why we started our company, honestly, because of what I saw, the pain for friends and family and clients in the great financial crash, and so here we are, and it kind of feels similar. I don't know what you think of the marketplace. You know, not that I think it's 08 with, with, the, with, with the debt, but it just feels like things are very, very high, and it feels like it's a great time to sell, not a good time to buy, but...